Today we're going to talk about testing through holes for galvanic leakage. For starters we're going to talk about the difference of current flow through fresh water and salt water. As you can see from these pictures where I use my multimeter and the ohm setting on my multimeter, you can see that salt water produces a lower number. In other words, salt water provides better current flow, less resistance than fresh water. Salt and water basically takes the water molecules and pulls the sodium and chloride ions apart so they're floating freely and that increases conductivity. So basically water plus sodium chloride salt will produce much better current flow and it also produces much better electrolysis and for us sailors electrolysis is a very dangerous thing if you take any type of metals put them on one electrode positive and then put another metal on electrode as a negative and put it into a salt water solution like our ocean you will watch the one metal basically deteriorate and accumulate onto the other electrode. This is called electrolysis and this is what causes our through holes, uh, prop shafts, props, rudder bearings, anything metal in the water to deteriorate. This is why we use a sacrificial zinc. As you can see from this picture I have a zinc over the side. This is hooked up to the negative on my battery system which is connected to my engine block. It's very imperative that of all things that this negative is connected to your engine block and it has to have very low resistance between the connection, the zinc block, and your engine block. If, it, if the resistance is too high it's easier for the electrons to pass from your prop to whatever the other source is. So you want to make sure that it's good wiring between that zinc and your engine block. Our next step, and whenever you put a new zinc in, you need to test the voltage between your grounding system and the zinc. So I put my multimeter on two volts and I take the negative lead of the multimeter and put it onto my zinc power line and I take the positive lead on the multimeter and I put it onto my boat ground. You should see between roughly 0.5 to 0.7 volts. Anything over 0.7 you have a problem. You have some type of excessive leakage into your boat grounding system. Anything less than 0.5 or near 0.5 is outstanding. Okay, here we have my multimeter and it's set to 2000K ohms. <clears throat> and if we touch, see it's currently recording one, which means there's total resistance, in other words, no closed circuit of any kind. If we touch the contacts, it should go to zero, which it does. So that tells us there's zero resistance. So we take the ohmmeter, take the contacts, touch my nice new through hole here, we should get zero, which we do. Now, I like to have totally isolated through holes with no grounding wire. <clears throat> I know you heard that, oh, you have to ground your through holes, but after doing a lot of research and basic understanding, <clears throat> a bronze through hole should be fine, which on this boat, there was never any grounding on the previous through holes, and they lasted 50 years. So if you read some journals, it will tell you, don't bond your through holes all together. It's creating one giant mess out of a small mess. All it takes is some 12 volt leakage into one area and it'll pass it all around to all the different through holes, leaving a giant conductor into the salt water. <clears throat> so what we want to test is make sure this through hole is completely isolated. So we're going to switch over to the tone setting, which is 200 ohm. So if we touch our through hole, we're going to get beeped because there's definite connection between there. Now we're going to touch the through hole 
and then we're going to touch the ground on the engine and touch the engine mount and you see we're getting no beep we're going to try a couple different places on the engine just to make sure I'm going to try the grounds up by the battery and you see we're getting a one which shows us there's absolutely no connection between the engine and the through hull now so this is exactly what we're looking for so that means this through hull is completely isolated from the engine ground and any other ground <clears throat> now here we have wire passing past this through hull if you know it's it's double shielded it's spaced if it were ever to rub a positive wire against this through hull now this through hull will become positively charged and that would go ahead and start electrolysis in the water and it would, galvanic action would occur and then the metals inside this through hull would start being eaten away very very rapidly within a few days you can lose an entire through hull so we make sure that we have double insulation and that this positive wire is away from the through hull actually I am going to <clears throat> take this wire and bolt it onto this bulkhead so it doesn't ever fall or rub against this so that's our goal we have we go to our negative grounds and we're continuing to show one on the ohm meter which means we have a completely 100 percent open circuit and there's nothing from the engine that's touching or causing it some of these hoses have wire spirals in them and you have to be careful with these You'll see some of them, like the exhaust hoses up top side here. You'll see a wire spiral in there, and you'll cut that when you <clears throat> size the hose to the fitting. That wire touches the through hole, and then the other end of that wire touches the engine. Now you have a completed circuit. So now this through hole has a potential to conduct electricity, and it's not isolated at that point. So you have to check those wires and cut them back pretty far in those hoses. Also worn hoses where you clamp down hard on them over years, you keep pulling them off of the through holes. They'll wear through to that wire and that wire is worn there. And if that wire is touching or worn up top side by the engine, you now have a completed circuit to the through hole. So your only test really is with an ohm meter and testing the ground actually between it. And we know this one is good. Okay, on our next test, we're going to set our ohm meter to DC volts to its lowest setting. Mine, I set it to, I do have a lower setting, and it's 200 millivolts, but we're going to be a little bit more than that. Now, on average, they say safely, your boat differential metal voltage, in other words, this prop shaft and the prop, which prop is bronze, prop shaft is stainless steel, it's going to produce electricity. Now, as you saw earlier, I have a zinc overboard. That zinc is going to deteriorate before the prop shaft or the propel or the prop does or the prop shaft. That's the whole purpose. That that zinc is grounded right to this engine. The so <clears throat> if we put our positive electrode and then our negative electrode on the engine, our positive electrodes on the through hull, you'll see we're at 0.456 volts. Now our acceptable range here is 0.5 to 0.7. So we're below the lowest acceptable range, which is great. And this through hole is isolated. So if the through hole was not isolated and we did this test, we would actually show zero. So if you show zero, you want to be careful that you actually may have a grounded through hole. But this is, this is a good range. Um, this is what I've been showing for years on this boat, even with the old through holes that were in here for 50 years. And as you know, my through hull is not grounded. I do not have a grounding wire on it. And the old through holes did not have a grounding wire and they lasted well, you know, into the age of this boat, which is 50 years old. If you are reading more than 0.7 volts, 
on any one through hole or even on your bonding, check any wire for chafing where exposed copper may be sitting in the um, bilge water. If you have salt water bilge, bilge salt water, salt water, bilge salt water, salty bilge water, salt water in the bilge, it's a very good conductor of electricity. And a chafed wire will go ahead and transmit electricity into that water. And then at that point, any through hole that's touching that water is now gonna become energized. So all my through holes are not in any type of water normally, unless the boat starts to flood a little bit. So even if I had salt water in my bilge, it's not gonna reach up to the through hole. But I do have all my wires out of the water and they're, I make sure they're insulated, they've been inspected. If you notice any discoloration or pink color, including pitting on any of your through holes, whether it be on the inside of the boat or on the outside of the boat, you'll need to address those right away. That is a definite sign that electrolysis is happening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for some uh, future videos and uh, happy sailing.